Yes, it's Quadabost, a celebration of Reeves and Mortimer. Please welcome your hosts for this podcast, MJ Price and Paula Wiseman. Hello and welcome to Quite a Boast, a new podcast dedicated to the work and genius of Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer. My name is Matt, previously of the long-running radio show The MJ Price Moment and founder of the Reeves and More of Curious Stuff Facebook group. And I am Paula Wiseman, broadcaster and creator of the Divine Comedians podcast. Joining us for this first ever edition of the podcast an actor who has appeared in countless films and tv shows including game of ready thrones and ricky gervais's afterlife plus more importantly my two boys favorite show the oliver twist prequel dodger he has also been a vic and bob cohort in several of their tv shows over the years which we will attempt to get through during the course of this interview please enter the novelty island paddock mr tony way hey hi tony how are you doing? Thanks for joining us, Tony. It's an absolute pleasure to have you, uh, uh, have the you with us today. The pleasure is all mine. The pleasure is all mine. So, shall we maybe start off by talking about your, your journey? So, I mean, how did yeah. the acting thing begin for you? I know you were part of a sort of, you were making comedy videos and stuff in, in, yeah. your, in your late teens. I mean, we weren't, I don't think, like, as an actor, you say acting career, how did I, my journey wouldn't have started without um, a Jim and Bob, really that's it that is they are i mean alongside charlie higson i think we i probably wouldn't have done it at all i don't think um i mean the, 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 there's a long and short version of the story the short version is <laughs> they sort of basically let me even realize that it's possibly possible to do this as a job um which i didn't really think was it was a possibility i don't think most people think that you can be on the telly do they i don't think <laughs> i mean everyone is now <laughs> But, you know, I don't think people really think it, unless you're sort of from that world, um, or you know someone who's even been close to even working in telly, you don't have a clue. And I, I did, certainly didn't. I was a big fan. Um, but thanks to, to Reek, my, my good mate, Reese Thomas, he got us sort of in there with uh, with Jim and Bob and Charlie and, and Paul and, and into straight like into the heart of the sort of most exciting bit of, british comedy industry at that point in the 90s so uh, literally we were in sixth form um making little comedy videos not i didn't have a any kind of ambition to do it as a job or i didn't know you could do it as a job as i said and then before without us knowing our uh, reese had gone off and shown our videos to bob mortimer um he didn't just know him by the way it's like <clears throat> literally none of us had no in with TV whatsoever, we knew no one. So um, this is yourself and Reese and Steve Reece Thomas, Burge. Steve so. Burge, who's now uh, got is a big comedy writer. He's got a big show coming out on Apple soon, um, and a couple of other friends, Glyn, uh, my friend Glyn, and my friend Steve Holbrook. We're all in a little comedy group together. Mm -hmm. um, they still write stuff for us now and again. Like you see, Steve uh, Holbrook is like Bram Pern's guitarist. He's a very good guitarist, and oh wow, like, uh, Glyn occasionally writes jokes for us. And he always turns up in things still. So we're all still close um but we were just doing that for fun as far as i was concerned and then reese phoned up um channel x productions which was the, they made everything vic and bob at that point uh, in the 90s and asked for tickets to see shooting stars um mm -hmm. and they said no that's not you have to phone um like the box office or something and he went all oh, right okay uh and then just as they're about to hang up he said have you got any work experience and the woman that answered the phone, Lisa Thomas, she's now a huge agent, actually, a big comedy agent. Mm. And she ended up being our agent for a little bit at the beginning. Said, uh, oh, well, let me check. Yeah, we do, actually. You can come and you don't get paid, but you can come and do two weeks' work experience. And he sort of said, what on? And then, yeah, Shooting Stars. You can go, you're going to be a runner on Shooting Stars, which was our favourite show. So that was already exciting. That was exciting enough. He got us tickets to go and see Shooting Stars. That was it, as far as I was concerned. I'd made it. <laughs> and then... I mean, how long, how boring and long do you want me to go into? <laughs> I mean, um, that's the thing. Bob has a real eye, doesn't he? For spotting. Yeah, he does. I mean, Reece, if you met Reese then and now, you'd go, well, you'd understand what Bob saw. Like, Reese is so full of energy and ideas. Mm. And yeah. He's a powerhouse. And 
Yeah. You were talking about Dodger earlier. Like, Dodger is an idea he's had for a long time. I would have given up on it ages ago. <laughs> like, I've got no staying power for that sort of thing. But he's pitched, he knew it was a good idea and he pitched it and pitched it. And in the end, he sort of, by sort of force of his own will, makes these things happen. And he's normally proved right, you know, like it's normally pretty good. Yeah. But so Bob met that a sort of 17 year old version of that. So he's even more excited and cocky. Um, and he, yeah, he re showed him our videos and, um, and then Charlie saw them as well because Charlie Hickson was, uh, I think script editor on that series of shooting stars. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think Paul had done it before, and then uh, Charlie's a bit more critical. Paul, I think, would just go, hey, it's funny or it's yeah. rubbish. Charlie would be a bit more kind of, he'd say it nicely. He'd still just say it's good or bad. But um, but he then said, what are you doing next, Reese? Do you want to do some more work? And he said, we're starting series two of shooting stars. Would you like to come and be the sort of main, one of the main runners on that? Wow. Well. And gave him a part in uh, like as, a, as a sort of extra in loads of sketches. Mm. Whenever they needed a young man, they didn't know any young men, uh, especially out, no. out, like, we were that children, basically. We could have played anything from 12 <laughs> up at that point. We're so fresh faced when I watched the videos back. But, um, was he a so, naughty boy? I yes, he was, <laughs> yes, he was a naughty boy. And um, yeah, it was loads of little things like that in the background. And then they said, um, he also had his own sort of regular part as swiss tony's yes um sort of uh apprentice yeah paul um yeah. and then as this was all going on i think reese became sort of as he he was a runner to start with but he sort of they realized there was something about him and he was funny and they got they became his mate basically. they became mates but they he sort of one day charlie apparently said to him um your friends i've seen the video are they any good are they actually any good can they be trusted and reese <laughs> said well you've seen the videos like they're funny so he said, well, we need someone to play like an oasis -y kind of cocky band in an indie club sketch. Oh, yeah. And if they're in for the day, they can be, we need some party guests in another sketch. And, you know, so we all rocked up to Television Centre and um, for the day, though it was not in front of a studio, that stuff, it was pre-record. And as far as I was concerned, it was like a lovely day out. And um, it was amazing. It was great fun, but it was like a fun day out. And then... The next day i got a little call saying uh do you want to come back and do some more stuff and it was a shoot a suit you sir sketch and it was proper that time it was like it used to come in on the monday we rehearse all week for the studio record um there's a place called the drill hall off top mm. it's famous yeah it's very now, famous it's now but it's also like they record loads of radio shows there and i think it's the rada studio now i think but we were rehearsing there i had no idea it was an important place to be i was just like i don't know what i'm doing but I spent the week so how old you, would you have been then tony so let me think that would have been 98 so 17 i think wow. 17 or 18 i'm so bad with dates um <laughs> it was in 97 it was that time late 97 early 98 but it was so mental that like it was so crazy that we did that i did that rehearsal all day and then did that friday we recorded in front of an audience and because I'd been, Reese was a runner, I got to hang out around as well and sort of mm. get the feel of it. And sh weirdly, Shooting Stars was still shooting next door, the next series. Um, There's all this stuff going. It was yeah, genuinely like I'd been dropped in the middle of sort of rip pop comedy in the 90s. It was very exciting. Um, And got to, yeah, got to record. I decided that was the job I wanted to do then. I, I think there were all, there was a lot of lot of different shows recording in neighbouring studios, weren't there? I mm, think. That yeah, well, that literally, that first recorded night. And I, I think I went to every record I could, mm. even if I wasn't in it. But there were, like, literally that run, there was, uh, I think it was, it was Shooting Stars, Fast Show, I'm Alan Partridge. And there was a panel show on, probably Buzzcocks or yeah. one of those. And I think like Top of the Pops was all one every week and Jules Holland was on there every week. So oh my God. it was just so yeah. much stuff happening, like really, and all of it at its prime. So it was first series of I'm Alan Partridge. What is this new thing? Like we, <laughs> I, had, I had to snoop around and it was like, the audience can't see the set. Like what's going on? It was this, but at the heart of it, I think weirdly it was Vic and Bob coming back to this point of the podcast. Because, yeah. <laughs> like they worked with everyone, everyone there. They'd been on top of the pops. They'd yeah, like, yeah. Uh, best performers and presenters. Like yeah, they're all over the far show as writers and friends and back and forth. It was a real and and that's also I think that they'd had some of Coogan had done some of his earlier stuff on. Yes, he's been in the Mel smell. Of, yeah, so of it was course, Paul real... and Charlie go right back to big night exactly. Out, and so that, there was this whole like the the green rooms were people just coming in and out, and I was there as this sort of young. I was still excited that they gave you free beer. 
Right, there's free beer. <laughs> no ID <laughs> check in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I must have been just 18. I don't think that, yeah. I don't want to get them in trouble. But, um, <laughs> it was just, yeah. So basically, that, my journey with Bob starts there um, with Jim and Bob. Uh, and yeah, like I say, I wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for that. I don't think. I, yeah. I'll give Reese's due as well because so like if it wasn't for Jim, Bob, Charlie, Paul, and Reese, mm. I wouldn't yeah. have, I wouldn't have even thought of it. Yeah, but you're obviously yeah. you're obviously a comedy fan. Do you know what I mean? Or you wouldn't have started mm. making these videos. So I mean, sort of going back in time, who would have been your comedy heroes? Uh, Vic up? and Bob, Vic and Bob massively, and Harry Enfield. So yeah, by yeah. sort of extend uh, extending from that, Charlie and Paul. Um, I loved. Uh, growing up i really loved the young ones i think everyone oh. uh, who was even but over the age of five yeah around that time who had any kind of sense of humor knew that the young ones were something very special i was probably too young to watch it but i think everyone says that my little sister was definitely too young to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was like five and she's the head butt people because she loved vivian she's a vivian she fan yeah vivian's the toddler right um but uh so yeah there was uh, I mean, I loved, I pretty much loved all comedy. And it, I was, uh, depending on what age you're talking about here, well, I, younger, that... I, I, I wasn't fussy. Anything that was comedy that was on, I was watching it. And I don't, mm. I never would have said I'm a comedy fan. I, I think I didn't really define it that way until later. But oh, yeah, no, I do watch far too Yeah, much you kind of like what you like, was, don't you? You know what I mean? You... Loads of it was rubbish. That, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I would watch any sitcom. Yeah. It's a comedy. I'm watching it. It's, if you're I, a child of the 80s, like, I was mm. uh, and people forget you had three four channels eventually and so yeah. yes you had the young ones and the comic strip we also sat through Little and Large and Russ Abbott's Madhouse well, and also and Cannon and Ball yeah and it's not just three or four channels the young ones and the comic strip are only on six weeks of the year yeah uh, and it's, so it's that's very sparse yeah. round between um and because nothing was like those it was sort of you didn't know it was also I think there was a strong when I was in my teenage I think there was a big really good repeat of uh monty python on bbc2 yeah. some point in the 90s maybe the late yeah. 80s and it was that was fantastic because well, i knew about python a bit and i knew the movies and i knew the, some of the songs from like my dad's record collection and stuff but to see the tv show not just sort of clips of it yeah. was what i think influential you can definitely see the influences on the things i liked though as well i mean i thought about 89 because that's, like, that's when um the anniversary of the start of a pipe right. in 30 years which would have been about the same time as vic and bob appeared yeah well, exactly exactly yeah Formative. yes it's funny how those things come around but uh, there was a very similar thing with the beatles in the mm. early mm. 90s that it was like everyone i think this happens every 10 years mm. every teenager thinks they've discovered the beatles yeah. and no one else knows about them um, yeah. I think the same thing happens with Python and probably Vic and Bob as the years go on. That one. Yeah, I mean, comedy, I found, is, is, it seems to be very generational. You know, you mm. kind of, you're watching stuff in your, you know, your your teens and stuff. And your parents are like, what is, <laughs> what are you watching? This is, this is <laughs> yeah. horrific. Even Big Night Out, my yeah. parents, my parents were like, what, <laughs> what are they doing? It just doesn't, it didn't Weirdly, make any sense to that old generation. I've got quite, my parents are quite young you know sort of compared to my age hmm. so they put me onto big night out i didn't no see way. it to start with wow but they would always every friday night have a few drinks and i would go out somewhere like, i might like to scouts or cubs or some <laughs> like thing like, like a play like, what, not, what do you call it like a sort of youth club or something yeah. out for yeah. a bit yeah. and i go what i didn't know what it was and they would sort of start saying the catchphrases and then wow. i started watching it and went oh this is brilliant so it's quite odd i got my parents were big comedy fans too so they were huge fans of uh friday night live and they were big fans of the young ones too because also there was one telly so if if they didn't like it yeah. I wasn't gonna be watching, yeah, yeah. watching yeah. it anyway yeah i, I might have been able to record it but that's the other thing all of these things are recorded because it was the 80s as well so they're all got mass rewatches. um you weren't just waiting for repeats we recorded everything uh in our house so um yeah yeah but it is it, it's, it's generational i think that there was a tipping over point where my dad sort of, I used to watch loads of my dad. My dad didn't, I think Garth Marenghi might be the, like, mm. the first real thing where my dad was like, mm, not, <laughs> oh, wow. really, like he liked it, but it was like, he didn't really get that thing of well, why, why it's bad on purpose. I get it. Yeah. He didn't right. see any, de see it any deeper than that. Whereas I absolutely loved it, but I also had to, you know, you, you start to 
that was well in the business by then, so it all gets becomes a bit mm. jaded and different when you, <laughs> you get to the yeah. I'm trying to explain <laughs> to my dad why this show is so brilliant. But yeah. So you fell in love with uh, Big Night Out from from the off then? First time I saw it, I didn't know what was going on at all. Um, no. And it doesn't, I don't feel like I've got this weird moment where I really remember watching it. I think mm. I just drifted in to it one night. Like I, I sort of was allowed, what year are we talking? 90? 90... 1990 series one. Yeah. So I was like, 12 13 yeah no 12 yeah so um i probably was being allowed to sort of just hang out and watch friday night yeah it was always a big night in our house friday night so the, the tv shows were things like that they were like music programs and big live shows but always the alternative it wouldn't have been like yeah i don't know whatever was on bbc one channel four have, was always good channel four it would have yeah, been the, 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 yeah the tube and stuff like that was always on in our house uh, young one, you had absolutely you had the American sitcoms like Roseanne and Cheers on a Friday night that as big well. Fans Golden of Roseanne and Cheers, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was and yeah, you get some sweets and some fizzy pop and yeah, ever excited <laughs> and watch all of that. And hopefully, your mum and dad don't have to drink so that you're still awake. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry, it started raining. I'm not, I'm not uh, ignoring you. It just really started raining. <laughs> I mean, just we sent it over from here. It was absolutely chucking down earlier, so it's obviously. Yeah, come it over. Been, yeah. we've had the works <laughs> today. Yeah. <laughs> so if we move forward to when you're working with Vic and Bob, the first, according to um, ITMB, um, the first um, work that Reese, at least, and Steve did with Vic and Bob is "It's Eureka," which is yeah. a very strange show from 1997. <laughs> <laughs> I was. don't know if it works or not. Hit it's and miss, like, I believe, is the phrase. It's like a sort of twisted, like, you know how in the 70s and the 60s they used to give everyone a TV show? Yeah, it's like, Lulu. Yeah, it's like <laughs> that, but like a really weird, twisted version of that. And obviously, Eureka's not a singer, so there's no, you can't hang your hat on that. So, yeah. But she's a pretty good comedy performer. I mean, there was some good stuff in that. There was stuff that um, Steve and Reese did was actually our stuff. Mm. It was these characters that me and reese had done with steve for a long time well i say a long time it was probably a year at that point but even been yeah. in the business not even um and obviously you need it was always two people bullying or not really understanding they went for more for the bullying and that than, yes they're not understanding it's, it's, uh, yeah this is um, to watch that yes. oh yeah yeah <laughs> i mean it, we got milder but as we sort of cultivated that character a bit more we sort of made it less like that we kind of grew up a bit and Mm. but yeah but because they it's supposed to be two people you know with the sun i was unneeded as a performer <laughs> also I, who am i who am i i have no but we've got a writing fee so um we've got paid for the sketches for writing them reese and steve went and performed them marika and then uh we um as we were i seem to remember now this is how like unprofessional we were we were about to go into a dodgy nightclub in, in essex for one of the nights that was the only the only nightclubs that were in Essex that were dodgy and uh Glyn turned to Steve Burge and said oh so you Reese has given Tony the writing money his half of his writing money are you going to give me half of his he went, yeah, yeah I've got it for you and as we're about to go past the bounce we gave him this envelope with the governor <laughs> written on it with like 400 <laughs> quid in it cash. and he went oh, this is the worst point you could have handed me a load of cash just to like, <laughs> go into a dodgy Essex nightclub um but yeah that's how sort of how we didn't know what we were doing we were kind of paying each other cash for yeah. um, <laughs> writing services but yeah so but we were I went to the records of that and it was they sort of let me be involved and in, in that but um it's quite a good cast that I don't mm. know when you last watched it but I think Matt and Dave are in it and I think it's one of Dave Walliams earliest performances yeah yeah um yeah he what a great a learning writer. curve though do you know what i mean to, oh yeah i mean <laughs> to amazing. be around at that time and then be involved in all these different projects it's... i must also give a big like shout out to channel x productions alan mark and jim reed who really took us under their wing because they would they kind of they would they just sort of saw something in us and i don't think we paid it back to them necessarily <laughs> <laughs> they sort of invested in us emotionally and, and financially and and I don't know if they ever saw the. I think we we all moved on from that. One, but they were really <laughs> early champions. They used to give us so much work and say, "Come and do this." And they literally that first year we were. I think we had done from it was in within the space of a year. We of me of Reese getting that runner's job. 
we'd done the far show, done Bang Bang Through the Mortimer on location. We'd gone to Edinburgh and we were about to film studio for Bang Bang Through the Mortimer. And then, like, from literally just sitting in a six form common room, not knowing what you're going to do with the Dumay levels to that was sort of crazy. Uh, yeah. You know, I stayed, it's all a bit of a blur in my memory because it was, I think, a bit of a blur. You probably just sort of been, I didn't, there's no plan or I didn't know what it yeah. meant. I'd say it all happened so quickly. Do you know what I mean? It was all happening yeah, yeah. so fast. You don't have time to, to process yeah. what's happening. I, I tell you what all that has done for me, though, is made me not be nervous around really famous people at all because mm. I couldn't have had bigger heroes than Dick and Bob and Paul and Charlie and all the people we met. And I just sort of got dropped in with them. Chat, and they just all chat and they're, you know, they're all lovely. You know, they're just normal people. Yeah. Once you've got over that, you don't, at that age, you're kind of uh, Tom Cruise and... You know, <laughs> all these people I've met since you go we're well, not quite like shrug it off but nothing will ever be as sort of weird as that first few times yeah. you know? <laughs> well since you bought up bang bang mm. it's reason more to know. let's uh, test those memory banks <laughs> further uh back in 1999 right um okay we start with your location shooting which I believe would have been as a member of mandate yes the it's boy Eastbourne. band can't remember what's these Eastbourne something like that um not that sure. would have been in 98 yeah. i think we actually filmed that right right there was a big old gap yeah. we it was filmed and then there was a huge gap before they did the studio i think they had to write it um because mm. we did a whole Edinburgh run in between um right. but it was amazing like i'd never done proper we'd done no we'd just done barking have we done barking yet i get so confused which way around these things happen but a lot happened in that first year so we'd done some location but we'd never been away i'd never been away filming before and that's right. a real rite of passage. It was only a couple of days. It, I think it was Eastbourne or Bournemouth, somewhere like that, in a big fancy hotel. And uh, with Mike Wattam, the Booster yes. Baby fella, uh, yes. and me and Reese and and, uh, and Steve. Great fun. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Me and Steve had no idea. Reese always had a slight more idea. I think the first sketch we ever filmed on Barking, Steve, because we, we used to improvise, Steve threw himself on the floor. Yeah. And me and Reese thought it was hilarious. And he stood up and <laughs> no one was laughing. And they went, and the first lady she went, right, okay. He got on his mic, walkie talkie, he went, we need, we need a 20 minute break. Uh, Steve has covered himself in mud. I mean, it was not. <laughs> but we were still acting like we were mucking about. So when we got down there, I think we made an effort to be more professional. But I think we got drunk quite quickly. <laughs> <laughs> we were in a hotel and there was a bar and we had a little bit of money. I seem to remember Mike Wattam doing a bit. It all went back to mine and Reese. Me and Reese were sharing a hotel room. He came back. We all came back for a, like a nightcap and him doing a bit about there not being a Gideon's Bible in the <laughs> bedside cupboard. <laughs> he was very funny, but he went too far. And I think he ended up destroying Reese's bed and then just sort of going, night lads and leaving. And then Reese just sort of went, my bed. I'm going to sleep in my bed. It was this sort of mad... I don't it know what happened funny. to Mike Wattam. He appears to have disappeared uh, the face yeah, of the yeah. I mean, that was the, the only time I saw him, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I might have bumped into him again since. I think he, he was in touch with, with uh, Charlie Chuck um, still. All oh, right. Um, who I've met since, who's a lovely man. But yeah, um, yeah I know. I know the. I don't know where he is. I'm sure he's out there somewhere doing something. He used to yeah. turn up, didn't he, every couple of years in something. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's there since, right since like, the big night out pilot, I believe. Might yeah, be he's a lovely bloke. Yeah. yeah, lovely man. Um, but I mean, they ha they're really good at choosing people like that. Mm. Well, they're good at picking people and giving them a go. But they let you go. Like they can't. They don't give you. A, there's no job for life. I think Charlie once said to Reese, um, "Like we'll, we'll just let you, you know, go and see what you can do for a minute." That's, you know, because yeah. you could just be given work by them forever. But I don't think that that's good for your career or good for you as a, as a, I mean, I'd happily have <laughs> taken yeah. that work, but they're quite good at giving you a go. And then like saying, now let's see, go off and see. Yeah. Well, I was going to you become yeah. too exp expensive for them. Really. Yeah. I suppose a bit like, you know, Matt Lucas was doing Bernard Chumley. Mm. I think that's when, where Bob saw him first doing that. You know, did you see that? Did you ever see that live? Yeah. In in incredible. He was absolutely way beyond his years, mm. way beyond his years. Um, I saw him make people like genuinely nearly faint. <laughs> One of the roughest pubs in in South End in Essex. We went along. And I was like, this is not even a comedy club. What and is it's this? Literally a dance floor, and people <laughs> stood around on the dance floor. And he came into the middle, 
um he tells this story about it and I, I think it might have been that night we were there where i think he made a bloke either wet himself or sort of <laughs> <laughs> he used to come out what's the swearing policy on this you yeah. can say whatever you like tony in this place in essex and you're expecting jimmy jones sort of comedy and out comes matt lucas like dressed as bernard chumley like, what the fuck is going on here um he used to do a th i can't remember which one of these two things it was either, it was a bit where suddenly he would just take his wig off and put it back on again yeah that used to make people scream with laughter and there's another thing we used to come out and say um oh, i'm a cunt i'm a cunt he was genuinely amazing like i uh, i think yeah match made in heaven when uh when jim and bob found him yeah um but yeah they're good at finding people like we say like matt um they had steve Cooker on is the man from Go West? Was <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, yeah, all these all these people are all like and Mark Williams and all these people went on to be in the yeah. fast show, Simon Day, they they know how to pick them. I think they genuinely just like finding people they find funny. Yeah. Not enough. Not enough people do that. A lot of people are always trying to search for a certain thing or they just go, No, that that this bloke's nuts and they're funny. And like Charlie Chuck as well. Like Yeah, well they carried on doing it with Dan Skinner and Vaughan. Yeah, Dan in, um, Skinner of Vaughan. Yeah, Dan, yeah. especially. Um, Dan's, I mean, Dan had a career. He, he, he That's a funny, because Dan had been around for a while. He, mm. he was doing, that gave that character a huge, like, platform. Yeah. And he's, yeah, I saw Dan the other day. He's, he's he's just touring, he's touring Angelos now, and he's still successful. Yeah. But that's a solid character he had there. That, that was something he'd been doing for years. Yeah. That always helps <laughs> if, you've yeah, got, yeah, yeah. if you go to them fully formed like that. Yeah. Your other uh, appearance on, on bang bang is probably one of my favorite pick and bob moments of all time is the uh the dancer in that uh sniff your song it's a phenomenal performance by yourself <laughs> <laughs> because you you, you see you, you acknowledge they're there but you're not looking yeah. at them as if anything strange is um, going on it's just I like did they give like, me instruction on that yeah i was gonna say bob gave me a little bit of direct bob's always good with direction but he always gives you direction whether he's good with it or not i don't know that's his thing to you, and you're, just as you're about to go on. They said, you know, you're a bit fey and a bit coy and that, but you know, you're a, you're right. a 70s gentleman. So, yeah. And then I thought, right, okay, I'll do that then. <laughs> so what does that look like in a script when it turns up? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I don't, yeah, it just is written. They write exactly what happens. It's, yeah. well, sometimes there's a drawing. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that's the, that, that and um, the Sniffy song does come back around a lot. It's a good bit, isn't it? It's a good, it's great. Line. And it's the costume true. makes it. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> living, I think. June Nevin did the no, maybe June Nevin was later. It's, yeah, they've always got good costume people, yeah. makeup people, Jim and Bob, and they love working for them because they get to do stuff that they'd never do normally. Lloyd Grossman's head and all this <laughs> mad stuff. You know, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Not, not just another moustache and another sort of, you know, fun. I know. Bob loves a comedy wig, doesn't he? You know? Oh, yeah. yeah he yeah. loves a wig. Sure does. He loves a wig. <laughs> also. <laughs> And of course, you end up with a rocket up your ass and sent to the stars. Yeah, at the end. Yeah, yeah. There, there was other stuff we filmed though that never saw the light of day that I'd love to see. There was oh, right. a whole thing that was um, a whole sketch that was called the Lord Mayor's Parade Trumpet Competition that was all done in studio. Oh, wow. I don't know what ever happened. That's like a lost sketch. It was insane. It went on for ages. Yeah, I was playing a sort of Dickensian character at the beginning of it. It became a song, I think. Sort of guy worked onto the Lord Mayor's Parade, and then there was a there was a man with really long. I think Steve Burge might have had really long arms and really long <laughs> legs, and there was this really old man who could talk playing a mayor. God knows how that went. I think it ended up being a song, but right. just gone cut. I didn't know things got cut at that point, and then I watched it and go, "Where's that gone? That was good. That yeah, it's in someone's it'll be, attic. It'll somewhere. be owned by someone. If anyone, <laughs> like, fifty know, years be, time, be someone will find it in their yeah. attic. You know, <laughs> well, then it was down to. To Jim and Bob or the BBC, they never really did extras on their no, DVDs, no. so there was never any deleted scenes no, or anything. I'd love to see that. They'll be there somewhere, maybe in Channel X's lockup somewhere. Yeah. Um, and there was another sketch that was I was in that was uh, Jim was being a doctor. Uh, Bob had a headache, and Jim said, oh, "I'm a doctor." It was like a real <laughs> good desk bit, you know. Yeah. I think it basically ended up sort of saying he's got it's because he had a massive nose, and then like, the punchline was I was next in the queue and I had this huge false nose on <laughs> I'm all for a whole day i've got pictures of it and every now and again i look at it and go what the fuck is that for oh, yeah, that sketch that never happened yeah but we hung around it like bang bang was like we really hung around yeah <laughs> reese yeah. wasn't a runner anymore he was a homunculus in the yeah. <laughs> um, so he was always there and we would just go and hang out all day and there'd always be a little there'd often be a little bit for us to do 
It was yeah. fantastic. Absolutely oh, fantastic. Man. We loved it. Um, yeah, it was it was such good fun. I mean... It was compared to Smell. It wasn't a massive cast. It was yourselves and um, Charlie yeah. and Marwenna. Yeah, yeah. And Matt was Matt That's true, band? actually. Sure. Yeah, I think well, all of the cast had gone on and got their own shows at that point, hadn't they? I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it is... I think the biggest cast is pro yeah, probably the, the stuff, the club, isn't it? That's where it gets a bit... Yes. But yeah. in the studio, no, it was very sparse. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah, but they were good times. And yeah. you appeared in 2000 in uh, the first series of Randall Hopkirk, Deceased. Oh, uh, yeah. As Charlie. Second Hammer of God. Yeah, Charlie got us in. It was me. I can't remember which, which foot hammer was first, but it was Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg's head hammer, uh, I think, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And then there's Reese and I and uh, Guy Pratt. Oh, right. Yes, whose dad was in the original. Randall yes. Hopkirk, and he's now, you know, he's a famous, famous bass guitarist guy. He's in mm. like, every band. Oh, yeah. Brian yeah. Ferry's bass player. Is he? Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And, he's, and he's Pink Floyd's for a bit as well. Oh, he's, he's worked with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but um, So that was interesting. Yeah. As my first, uh, this became a theme, my first on-screen death. Uh, By I, Arrow, I think. Yeah, I've now died in everything. I die every everything. You're shot by oh, what's the actress called? Um, she was she was the dentist in the Only Fools and Horses episode Fatal Extraction. I can't think of the name. It. I've died so many times. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so many killers. <laughs> no, you're right. It was so, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I've died so many times. It's my thing. Yeah. I mean, do they give you any leeway with you know when you're when you're doing these parts? Is there any kind of leeway in what you're doing? Do you do they give you a little uh, bit of freedom, from, or is it from, kind of this is our vision and this is what we, we want you to uh, do? I think there's definitely leeway. Like, mm. It depends what the part is. Some things you have to like. A lot of those parts are so small, and you know they're they're getting you somewhere. But like, what I did as the man with the rocket up his ass, like <laughs> if I just turned up and did a dance. They, I knew they knew we had to get from here to there, from there yeah. to there, and they were going to do their thing. And then I kind of just sort of <laughs> did what I wanted to do. And then they tell me whether that's right or wrong. But yeah, pretty much. Like, they want people to come and be funny. Yeah. Um, or yeah. they want people to come and be dead straight, which in that case, you know, you yeah. kind of get the gist which way they want you to go with it. Yeah. Like, well, they obviously yeah. chose you for your skill set. Do you know what I mean? They've, I mean, se they've seen something in yeah. you and, you know. Matt Lucas is coming and doing... <laughs> well, shooting stars just didn't yeah, want to and there's it. variations of you know there's degrees of that but some things are written quite specifically mm. other things you get the script and you go i don't know what that means really so on the day i'll ask probably ask one of them yeah. like what what am i doing <laughs> really get it. but there is always yeah. a terrible moment where sometimes you do a thing and you look up vicar bob look at you like and you go you just know i've got this completely wrong i don't know i've <laughs> clearly misunderstood <laughs> Yeah, but you can't yeah. take it to heart. Just have another go. And yeah, then you'll get there. Or the big one, Bob always does. He come over and uh, Tony, why don't you try? Um, can, can you do uh, Geordie? Or can you? All right, no, that, and you try it. He goes, no, Irish, and he'll just go through all the accents <laughs> until he goes right. That one makes it a bit funny. Let's go with that. And you go right. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. There's nothing. There's no bad joke that can't be fixed with a good accent. Yeah. <laughs> Especially on Bang Bang. That was like, <laughs> the thing was just, what accent are we going to do? <laughs> yes. The next Vic and Bob show you were in is one that's it's largely forgotten nowadays, which was Monkey Trousers, uh, which yeah, was on yeah. ITV Saturday nights, I believe. Yeah, the all-star comedy show. I can't remember. Yeah, what that was the pilot. Was called it? In it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 That uh, was good yeah. fun, actually. That was my the pilot, first... It's a strange sketch you are in, was your... Um, you're a, a man in a lift whose mum rings him and you, you answer the phone just to say, yes, mum, I'm still gay. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that sketch. <laughs> that was my first introduction to properly to Maidstone Studios, which was their base, has been, was their base oh, yeah. for some time. Um, yeah, that was good fun, that sketch. It's where I met my uh, my life partner ah. on, on that, well, around, and around that. Um, yeah, it was good fun, that, that. It was quite relaxed sort of come and go because they're always you always only ever have one thing to do um because yeah. you knew the next one was gonna be like matt berry or john thompson or coogan was in you know it was, yeah they've got a good cast on that that could have been a catchphrase tony what's that <laughs> <laughs> i'm still gay <laughs> yeah. that's that, i think that that's what we always hope every time we <laughs> say anything it will be a country <laughs> not everyone's yeah, yeah. I'm catchphraseless. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. All the kids in the playground the next day. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it, there was some good stuff. I think Matt Lucas did something similar on Little Britain. Yeah, I beat, did I beat yeah. him? To, no. <laughs> you did the... Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe the radio series have gone time. by then. Yeah. Oh, let, let's say sure. you did. Let's say you did, Tony. <laughs> you did the Ablett Associates <laughs> sketches yes. Yes. as the that's chef. A side note to that, Ablett, Rachel Ablett, um, one of the producers on that. That's why that's called Ablett Associates. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, we have an injury claim and a multi yeah. multi yeah. injury or minjury claim. Injury, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quality stuff. But I did watch it. It is on YouTube. The episode of that with a commentary from Bob, which is a commentary they've done on DVD. And if I may, I'll um, read out what Bob says when you appear on the screen, Tony. That's okay. Yeah. I think I heard um, this, but it was a long time ago. Oh, uh, well, just it is Bob Mortimer's words, not my own. <laughs> Tony is a great big lovely lump with mm. panda's eyes. Yes. I can't tell if that's from an iodine deficiency or from a terrible beating he takes from his elderly relatives. I just don't know. <laughs> that is, uh, I do remember him saying, I remember the iodine bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I mean, it, it's it's the iodine, not the relatives, if, if you're interested in the true answer. <laughs> It's something we all dream of, though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Bob saying something like that about you. <laughs> yeah, he gave us a nice little mention at the end of his book, actually. It was really sweet. Um, oh, yeah. Along with Lucy. And it's sort of a really lovely thing he says about Lucy as well. It's a good book, by the way. I'm sure you've both uh, devoured that. Yes, um, yes, yes. The, first, the, the autobiography, yeah. And yes, away. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the way. yeah. yeah. I remember as a, an office really worker there. operating a photocopier. Uh, and it blows up as oh, you leave the roof. She's killing off ten or something. Yeah, I did a load of other stuff that, uh, once again, everyone, as always happens, that didn't see the light of day. I did, there's a whole run of these sketches I did with Morena where she plays a sort of Northern Irish child. It's quite oh, really? religious. I don't think they ever made it to the screen. And I was her, like her friend who she sort of torments. It's all written by Bob. And each sketch, I think, slightly got overshadowed what she was saying because Bob had decided in every sketch he wanted me to eat a giant pie in the back <laughs> of the shop so as she was doing her whole bit it, these pies were absolutely massive and i just had to eat a whole pie and she <laughs> and his dream was i would take the last mouthful just as she finished <laughs> talking so some of these things along with others it's such a bob thing and it, when it worked it did work really well but sometimes i, was like, I'm, I can't eat pie quickly this is quite a short <laughs> I think, I don't know why they didn't end up being on. Maybe because Morena watched it back and went, this is just Tony eating a pie. Like, <laughs> <this is not." laughs> um, but they didn't get on. There was, I did another thing with Brian Murphy and Liz Smith. I can't remember what the, the gist of that sketch was, but there was loads of other stuff that didn't get used. Which that's, the, that's the thing about sketch shows. You, you, you lose so much. Yeah. Um, You're working with some greats there, though, with Liz Smith and Brian Murphy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. 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 Also, uh, you don't always know what you can't. I can never remember what is in it and what isn't. So I always talk about these sketches, and people go, "I don't know what that was." Yeah, yeah. I probably didn't make it in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the chefs made the cut, uh, and Liz Smith. <laughs> and um, the deleted scenes on YouTube where you're a snail expert who crushes snails. I have no memory of it's that. It's sort of an Alan Titchmarsh <laughs> type character pushing a wheelbarrow. What? I have no <laughs> memory of that. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Check it out after. Maybe I think every it was. I think I do now remember it was like on the little bit of grass near the entrance to yes, um, yeah. Maid Stone Studios. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember. It's something like they, you release the snails, and the narrator says, "So is that the best bit of the job?" And you say something, "No, this is the best bit," and you just stamp on them. I believe. I do remember that now. <laughs> yes, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made the DVD anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's on my tombstone. Definitely made the DVD. <laughs> 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 you may have seen him in these deleted scenes. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember any of it, but I'm sure it was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bob called you back in 2010 for the Shooting Star series, I think she, series seven, for a couple of cameos. Yeah. Well, that was a tricky one. That I was actually, what year was that? 2010. I was actually quite I think it was 2010, yeah. at that point. Yeah. Okay. Um, but my, I owed them a lot. And, um, my girlfriend was producing that series, so I right. had to go back and do these mental... It was really good fun, but, like, I was genuinely in the middle of doing some quite big films and TV shows <laughs> and stuff, and then I'd go, oh, I've got to go... Like, people say, what are you doing tonight? I go, I'm going to go and be 
a man with a smelly finger on shooting stars or whatever. <laughs> like, why, are you, why are you doing that for? They're, they're paying you well. No, they're not really paying me as such. But it's <laughs> so yeah, I got, I got, I like literally, there was one, I can't remember the last series they did of shooting stars. It was a bit later than that, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was one more after that. Like. I, I was genuinely filming with Tom Cruise. Right. On a Tom Cruise movie for six months. And it, there was a row of weeks where I did leave and went to to uh, television centre and yeah I was and like I think I was dangling having <laughs> my face by from Do Henry VIII like, well, yeah I was Henry VIII and stuff like that it was <laughs> yeah I, I loved it though I loved doing those little studio bits it was so so Sylvester Stallone staring at potato which is a fan and another fantastic performance <laughs> yeah that's another one that gets retweeted to me every yes. day I guess <laughs> but yeah literally i think that was i think that might have been a, a tom cruise film one i did that yeah <laughs> dressed up the semester alone yeah <laughs> i mean you you must literally wake up every morning and pinch yourself you know what i mean it's just the, the career you've had has just been yeah i mean incredible you should get complacent <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah and i know what you mean um it is a job though it's like it will once you get over that over the excitement of meeting famous people and hmm. it, it is a job at the end of the day so some things about it are really genuinely are fun but there's no glamour there really hmm. it's mostly turning up at a car park at five in the morning and having someone <laughs> stick a beard on you and then, like, <laughs> going to stand in a cold field all day and i suppose it is the most glamorous bit of the industry but the industry as a whole like, it's it's like quite you know it's 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 proper hard work it's not coal mining don't get me wrong but <laughs> if I, i'm not saying it's hard work so much in as in it is a job you know it's mm. it's fun exciting but at the end of the day you're there to do a job and some jobs are more fun than others obviously i suppose you said one one week you could be working with international film stars like tom cruise and yeah, making yeah. game of thrones and the next you yeah you could be dangling on the wire yeah. just as henry VIII. Or, and i mean all those things potato. are fun in their own way but weird like doing the henry VIII stuff is the more fun that comes yeah. around less than other things. Yeah. I always get excited when Jim and Bob have got a live show of some description or an audience-based show. Because I always hope that I'll get yeah. called to come and have some. Because also, you go and do it, it's normally something hilarious or something deeply embarrassing. And then you'll have a pint after when it's a live show like that. Yeah. You're back in the green room and having a drink and a chat. It's fantastic. Um, um, it's a good catch-up with your mates, I guess exactly exactly yeah it, 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 more and more we all only see each other via work really we should mm. all mm. we should all meet up into there is a thing where we all try and meet up at christmas but that's got quite sparse as the years have gone on. yeah <laughs> but around christmas we all meet at a pub in i won't name the pub otherwise everyone will turn up um, <laughs> uh, and i think it was set up by paul and uh, by charlie and bob who said like we've no, you know we don't drink all day anymore like we used to <laughs> as everyone's got a bit older that doesn't but there's still a there's still a strong group like um me and reese and i and uh charlie and and like paul coming uh dave cummings rather from uh fast show writers and and paul whitehouse and a whole bunch of different people all come i don't yeah. think bob's been to one for a while no yeah everyone lives, mm -hmm. lives too far away from each other <laughs> Yeah, they've all got families and things nowadays. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd say it, did, it definitely <laughs> helped though. Starting at the age, starting at seventeen, do you know what mm. I mean? Obviously, kind of, you know, you're at a good age to sort of to meet this this network. Yeah, I think. I, I mean, it's it's a funny thing because we gave up. We didn't go to university because Charlie and Bob told us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a funny old thing. I'm glad we didn't. Um, but it was good advice, I think. Like they sort of said, "Don't go. Why go off there? If you want to do this, you will never get back here as quickly as you got here now." Yeah. Uh, yeah mm. all right. And then, and also, we assumed it was all going to be just get better and better and bigger and bigger. And obviously, we then had like five years of ups and downs, and you have loads of time we're not not having any work and stuff. So we still put our dues in, but we were very lucky. I feel very lucky at the beginning there. I yeah. feel like you can't, you don't stay lucky. Think you have to be good or mm, yeah. have something about you you have to tell yourself that <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, I think that not only it's luck combination of luck and like bob and, and charlie and, and and jim's kind of 
help and their kind of... Mm. Well, no, but there's obviously a bit of talent there as well, Tony. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean like, they're not idiots. They're not going to just drag someone <laughs> no. who's rubbish. You'd hope, like, that would, that would, would benefit anyone, would it? It would be like a weird social experiment, though. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they... they, they, they I can think of some to... shows. Not... <laughs> Well, yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, yeah, they give you com- it gives you confidence when someone like Bob says, "No, it's fucking funny." Like he genuinely, and he'd laugh, like properly laugh at what we were doing, and you think, "Oh, this is amazing! This is great! It's a real confidence boost." It definitely yeah. helps when the year later someone's telling you you're not funny in a review, or you know, just generally you go, "Well, no, uh, I know a few people that disagree with you, and I trust their opinion." Yeah, a bit more. and then yeah. sometimes you watch back that stuff, you go, "No, I." wasn't funny they were right actually. <laughs> um yeah yeah I know them a lot yeah, yeah but i mean bob bob's I a national uh comedy treasure national treasure, treasure. Yeah. National yeah. treasure. he's a national comedy treasure and, you know he's yeah. a national treasure now Literally. so he is yeah you know he, it takes a lot to reach that status he's become philosophical in his old age and yeah <laughs> more relaxed and no it's great the stuff he's yeah. doing now there's a, here's a relaxedness about bob now that makes it's a different sort of bob and it's really fucking funny yeah, I think yeah. I, I'm a fan of his podcast. Him, his uh, Atletico Mint. Oh, yeah. just um, yeah. and obviously yeah, like wonderful. him on uh, Would I Lie to You and stuff like that. Yes, yes. yeah. Um, it's a good. It's a sort of. It's a yeah. It is. It's a national treasure kind of. It really is. I mean, even mm. just falling over on the shows he does with Paul. <laughs> oh man, every single episode he goes. Well, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> I don't think any of us realise the the lack of confidence he had when you read his book. To yeah. uh, think he's probably more comfortable in himself now, being himself yeah. on these yeah. shows. Yeah. I think that comes with age. We all get a little bit more comfortable in our own skin, don't we? Also, the illness can really, like, mm. I don't know. It's not something you'd ever get into, but you know, he, he, it's it's a big thing that I'm doing there. And then, and, and then Jim's got his art stuff, which is all absolutely brilliant. Oh, incredible. His Sky, his Sky incredible. Arts documentaries are so good um yeah and well, i mean I, I own i've not got any in here weirdly but uh, throughout the house we've got loads of his paintings and drawings from over the years and they're just wow. so good got this for my 40th birthday my girlfriend my, my girlfriend's worked with him for years as well so we know him very well pretty good isn't it get a screen good. shot of that i haven't got it on the oh, wall so i'm not completely going yet i just have it by my legs at all times <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i love his i love it i love jim he's so he's a beautiful man yeah he doesn't stop working, does he? He's always every day. No, it's there's something like, new on I Instagram, think, some new picture. He's done. Uh, yeah, and it's it's all brilliant. It's all properly good. It's not. I'm so yeah. glad he embraced yeah. that and made it not a thing that he does as well. Lots of different yeah. things. That's really the thing. He good. could have gone down a totally different path, couldn't he? If he'd, mm. if he'd continue with the art mm. side of things, do you know what absolutely. I mean? Yeah, goldsmiths yeah. might never yeah. have happened. And no, you know, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. he would have. I don't think you can take it all that seriously, though. So I think it always veered towards comedy in the end. But there's definitely yeah. loads of famous yeah. artists that are like it's comedy. <laughs> he just sort of admitted it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've got to be first... co-faced with a lot of the art, but not with Jim's. Yeah, but they start art, art rock was a big thing, was it? An art art school rock. But do you think he was the first art comedian? Maybe I'm getting my stick getting too hmm. into it because I can't think of anyone before him that was I don't know, Spike, Spike. Maybe Spike Milligan. Spike, Spike Milligan was doing a lot. Of, yeah, was doing I just a lot think of stuff. He was actually crackers. <laughs> I think he it, that was something else. Yeah. <laughs> I think people you see, it looks like art. Yeah. I'm not sure he was going out there saying this is Dadaism. Yeah. I don't know. I think yeah. Jim might be one of the first yeah. people that kind of knew yeah. it as he was doing it. You know yeah. I mean? No, I think a lot of Spikes. Yeah. He, you know, was from all... when, when he was in the war. <laughs> Yeah, is that, yeah, his books are amazing. He's, oh, he's man, always, in, Jim's always incorporated right. art Incredible. in his work. Yeah, I mean, even down to the yeah the sketches on stage. So the last right. thing I think you did on TV with uh, Dick and Bob was House of Fools. Was it? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, that was good fun. Um, up in Manchester. What a cast! Yeah, a brilliant, and everyone wanted to go and do it as well. I think also word got out that it was a laugh to go and do it. So everyone yeah. that got asked said, "Ah, oh, you go to Manchester for a couple of days." Is a bo- real boozy do after in yeah. the holiday in next door. <laughs> I, think I did two episodes. I can't quite remember um, whether one of them did or didn't You're get in. Butcher brother dancer. Yeah, yeah, with, with Romesh and Ramesh Tom Davis, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a great routine. Yeah, that was a funny. Uh, we did like an audition. <laughs> I don't know why for 
Bob. I don't think anyone knew oh, right. really knew Tom and Romish at that point, but obviously they were only going to get us to do it. But mm. I think it was called an audition, but Bob wanted to see what we could do. So we kind of just, <laughs> he, he basically, so he, it, it was, what voices can you do, lads? And I sort of went, I'm going to do a high voice. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Like, we all did a voice. Yeah, that's right. And I, I remember coming out and like Romish <laughs> and Tom are both proper stand-ups. Like they live for the laugh and they were like, I don't know. <laughs> Is it worth, no, really don't worry about it. And also if the audience don't yeah. laugh at anything you do, please don't worry because oh, they only ever laugh at Jim and Bob. That's all they're here for. So <laughs> yeah. it, it will work in the edit. <laughs> well, they were like, oh, we're dying out there. Go, but it's not your show. Like it doesn't, you'll be all right. <laughs> I can't remember yeah. the other thing I did on was. I was like a customer. There you, was a whole bit that was cut. You were you wrestle mm. um, in the last episode. I think you're in exactly the same costume as the Butcher Brother. I forget why you're wrestling. I think you're wrestling Jim. He, right. In the bistro set. There is, a, I think, a big long setup to that that was all cut, where I Hoover attacks me. All cut. It was a big long thing. Yeah, I didn't It was it. all cut. It didn't... I don't remember it all. So I think it ends up being I'm just a customer. Or like you say, like I'm wrestling yeah. or for some reason you don't really know yeah. why. Yes. I think there was a reason and it just was all cut out. <laughs> and it involved Dan Skinner and a Hoover. Um yeah. yeah. It's, it's weird. It's like, oh, what's he doing there still? But it was a completely yeah. different, like it was a whole <laughs> other thing that just got cut out. Um that yeah. was good fun, that show. Matt's fucking oh, great series. Cool. And the cast is, like you say, extraordinary. Oh, you God. think what yeah. Eddie's gone on to do now with Tash and stuff, and they're really good. They are good at spotting people. They really are. Like, the, what we do in the shadows. The Morgana thing mm. is just, oh, yeah, man, yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yes, it's, um, um, I wish they'd done more of it. I think it deserved another series, but. There could be. I think, there could be, could be something in there. Because they did, be, they went back to Big Night Out, didn't they, after, which was also brilliant. I didn't get to be on that one, because they got the magnificent Vaughn to cover it all. Yes. <laughs> But famous people in the world. <laughs> yes. The man of many faces. I'd yeah. Watch, I'd yeah. Watch and get well soon, Vaughan. He's not well at the moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we've spoken to Vaughan and he's, he's oh, up for it, hopefully, when, he, yeah, when he's yeah. better. Yeah. He's a lot yeah. Better. So, I mean, so looking back at all the stuff you've done with Jim and Bob, do you have a favourite, mm. a favourite role, a favourite sort of character out of um, all the ones that you've, all the ones you've done? Mm, I, said, I mean, I genuinely loved doing the man with the rocket up the arse, and that's so early on. But it was just like this is just a laugh. Super. This is so silly. It's like you don't see it coming. You just get to dance around. I was dancing around with Jim and Bob in one of their songs. My favourite things used to be their opening songs on big on like and the yeah. ending songs. They were my favourite. Some of my favourite bits. And the get out of bed song was one of my. What me and Reese used to just watch it over and over and over. Um, so to be in one of those, a dream. So probably it might be that, you know. I genuinely, the, the parts all meld into one. I do find it very hard because I, as yeah. I say, you always feel that 20 more that no one ever sees. So <laughs> yeah, it's quite hard to, I quite enjoyed that one, the Rocket one. It was like a first thing I'd ever done that was a big kind of song and dancey kind of thing as well. Yeah. Although like, I'm clearly not doing it. <laughs> it's sort of like the anti-song and dance. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think that's got a little special place in my heart, that one. And all of that time, that time there on, on uh, Bang Bang was mm. pretty, like for us, eye-opening. Um, yeah. Because we'd done the Fast Show a bit and looked at that. And this was like, ah, oh, this is, they were at their height. They were huge at that point. Yeah. Uh, Jim and Bob. They were doing adverts and this and that. And they had about six shows on the go. And they were being asked to do, I think it wasn't long after that, they did um, Families at War. Yeah. That was a good record. Mm. I went to the record of the first one of those. So friends, I think maybe Steve Burge was in it. I can't remember. Was he the, there was like, they I did the spider and the water boatman thing. I think there was, maybe it was the pilot. I think it might have been one of them. I can't remember now. Like, as I say, it blurred into one, but that was, that was fun. I remember always being really excited that they got on BBC One. Like, this is how it's happened, the yeah. revolution. Is, and they were quickly shoved back on. And there are some episodes on, on YouTube. Yeah, you watch I it back now. You think, how did this get on? How did this get on to BBC <laughs> yeah. One Prime Time? Because it's just yeah. Else. Well, you say that. I mean, what the fuck is Mister Blobby? <laughs> like, Mister Blobby is the most reasonable of a thing, really. Yeah. Like Noble's House Party. I know they did their version of it, but like, actually, weird program. Like, it's yeah. actually when you think yeah. about Noble's House Party, anything could get on BBC One. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he didn't have. Yeah, he didn't have the. 
Was it the water boatman and the spider? <laughs> That's right, yeah. It was literally like you dropped acid and you just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, I remember just turning up and the yeah, long-time producer, Lisa Clark, said, oh, hello, she was there. Um, and we sort of chatted. And then I looked at the screen and went, what the fuck? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> this is, I thought it was a game show. Yeah. Is- yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us anything, Tony, if you know anything about the glove? Uh, I could tell you, uh, I'm I'm waiting. I'm whenever they want to film it and wherever they film it, I will be there when they tell me. But apart from that, I I read the script. It's really funny, um, but I, yeah. I I just wait. I'm waiting. I'm signed on to it, as are loads of other people. But I don't know when we're filming it. So. Yeah, there were there were photos right. circulated, weren't there? Table read throughs and things. Yeah, I did one a long time ago uh, mm. for that as well. Yeah. Uh, you can't hold much stock with read throughs like yeah. the people that are doing them because people mm. come and go. But um, I hope it does happen. I think it was going to happen. Um, I can't remember when it was going to happen, but it's it's sort of I've signed a contract. So. Oh, it's been talked about for years yeah. now, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah. This it hello might have project. even been on, on yeah. your your group, Matt, which I'm a member of your uh, your Vic and Bob group. Um, but somebody, yeah. someone find like something from a fan club yes, from like I've 89 or something the, um, yeah i've got the fan club yeah i've got the fan club newsletters i'm back in <laughs> which jack dent used to run and back in 1993 right. it's one of the uh, stories is next year vic and bob hope to have a feature film going into production yeah and 30 years right. later we're getting a little bit closer <laughs> they're tricky films they're really hard um they were just waiting for the right cast it's cast the money. It's always about waiting for. It's so yeah. films are so odd. It's all about and if thing if things don't. It's all about it's so boring. I'm not going to get into film funding. <laughs> I'm not going to go into it. It's just yeah. tricky. F- funding films is tricky. It's all about timing and who's yeah. available when. And then when if they're not, the funding falls through and it's back to square one. That's just the and that's like every film yeah. unless it's a major studio making. Oh man, I could crowdfund it. I could, they could so easily crowdfund it. I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, it's... A, I? it's I, I think maybe they wouldn't... I don't know if they think... I mean, I think they'd get the money straight away, but yeah, I don't know, I think yeah. that's a bit beneath them. I don't yeah. know. I mean, some people don't like to go down that road, do they? But, yeah, and also, know. they... Don't, I'm a bit short this month, Paula, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> didn't uh, Jim... Jim did some crowdfunding on his, for his one of his books, or... For the books, that, that, yeah. The Unbound books, yeah. 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 That's, uh, but that's quite a common thing now. Mm. I think the... Um, um, I, I always go, Unbound is different, I think, to Kickstarting. Yeah. Kickstarter can be yeah. a little bit beggy, I think, especially when there's no mm. reward. At least Unbound, you know you're getting a book. Yeah. You know, yeah. At the end of it, if you kickstart a movie, and, I, and don't, I, I'm going to get myself in trouble, but I, I'm not against kickstarting a movie, but you don't get anything for it. You get a mo- the movie gets made. Do you know what I mean? It's a tricky one. Yeah. I think that they maybe th- they might think I don't know what I'm. I'm, I'm up for crowdfunding yeah. if there's a reward for the crowdfunder. Yeah. But some crowdfunding things that like they say I won't name it, but there's a local place near me that are trying to crowdfund to get their this thing open and going and one of the crowdfunding options that it's 20 quid for a tote bag and this and that and then one of them is like eight grand and i'm saying i think and you get your name on the wall and this and that and then i'm a business partner now (laughs) i'm a a shareholder like it's mad i suppose if there's like a rich fan (laughs) they want to just do it but it won't be just funding. It'll be so. Yeah. I, it, it's it's not just that. As things go on and on. But um, yeah, I'm ready to go. No, but if you've got money to piss off a wall, do you know what I mean? It's just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm genuine. I'm ready. I'm ready to go whenever they start filming. I'm there. I'd love to see the part. I'm Fingers playing. crossed. I can't, I can't see it. It's only small, but it's genuinely mm. just me looking at my face and telling you the part. I'm, <laughs> I'm the, phone, <laughs> the phone would literally start ringing. <laughs> Tony, what have you done? Yeah, but I hope we get to do it. It was supposed to be. There seems to be a new story every year. day. Yeah, with Jimmy saying this that uh, this would be their swan song. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sure, they'll do something else. But they've both got like full on separate careers now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it would be amazing if they do a podcast together. But I don't know. It might be a bit more of a watered down version of what they can do. Mm. They they work better with production. Jim and mm. Bob. They like yeah. stuff happening, and you know. Yeah, I think you're right. It would be fucking hilarious though, because like, he's do you, you must listen to Jim and Jules uh, podcast. Yeah. They, he's a good podcaster, Jim, as well as Bob. Um, I don't yeah, know. I'd like to. Well, see if they ever wanted to dig out any of the old characters, 
Kinky John or Chris and yeah, Carl yeah, or the Stots, yeah. then a podcast might be the way for them That's to do true. it. That's true. That's true, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even all the, the voices that, that uh, Bob does on yeah. Atletico Mints, just incredible. Yeah. Some of the, yeah. the songs, that yeah. country yeah. songs he's coming Scottish out. Scottish Tales. Scottish Tales, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Peter Beardsley. And, <laughs> and he's literally there <laughs> chopping the, every single voice. <laughs> with a different voice for each character. It's the effort he puts in as well, though, because not many people put that effort Dick in. and Bob character, by the way. Yeah, I used to do all the stunts. Yeah. Um, Kinky John Fowler's up there as well. In fact, yeah. the whole... Um, yes. You know who I really loved? And he, it was it was um, Tom Fung before he got reused. <laughs> it was only such a small part early on. Yeah. And I remember me and Reese talking to them and saying, oh, I wish you'd do more Tom Fun." I don't think it was down to us, but then they did a run of it on... Bang bang, <laughs> John Craven as well. <laughs> Fucking hell, I love John Craven in Smith. Yes. <laughs> Sting just, when they had turning the, into a Dalek. When the Stotts, the Stotts interviewed Sting, and now Sting uh, yeah, is obviously no, in, is in Geordie Heat. So you know, <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> with his massive house and his massive drive. Well, thank you very much, Tony. That was fantastic. Oh, you're very welcome. Anything, anything exciting coming up soon? Or? I've, got, I've just done a big film. I can't talk about it. I love to <laughs> that must be story of your life. It's not a huge, yeah, it's not a huge part, but it's a good. It's exciting. It's experimental, but big, big stars. Yeah, even if I started, I'm going to, to do a whole other podcast to explain the premise of the film. It's mental, but tiny <laughs> part in that. Um, what else have I done? Not yeah, not that. I've got a toddler I look after now. <laughs> That's what. Uh, yeah. home, home set, home set, America set. <laughs> uh, Filmed in England, set in America. That gives oh. you nothing. That's everything now. Everything <laughs> set in America. It's not a Ken Loach. No, it's not a Ken Loach. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I can't, you know, I, as I say, even if I started describing it, you'd never guess because it's so weird. Um, yeah. Oh, it's like you were saying about the whole Dodger thing earlier. Do you know what I mean? Everyone loves an urchin, don't they? Do you know what I mean? They, they certainly do, yeah. I've got to say a big shout out to Lenny as well for winning all the awards. Uh, he's absolutely little Lenny Rush. He's um, yes, he's winning he's everything, and he's so sweet, he's oh, so funny, incredible. His little broom, yeah, yeah. That first he's, episode, he's so good in, uh, in, um, yeah. Uh, so I met him at the comedy. So at the comedy awards the other day, and I was like, he just he really deserves it because he's so good. He steals every scene, not just in Dodger, but in you know everything he's in. Again, he's very young, isn't he? He's still thirteen. Yeah, he's still at school. 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's he's yeah. Oh God! I had seventeen. I thought I was doing well. And he's, well, no, but you obviously heard your story. You obviously heard your story about being seventeen. I thought, right, well, I need to, yeah. I need to get in there even earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the yeah, Tony way. Dodger. I need to get in there earlier and start at thirteen. You know? but comedy fans, Dodgers a big one because everyone in it's like there's loads of comedy people in that, especially in yeah the specials. Recently. Lots of good cameos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots yeah. of people from the gang. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today, Tony. It's been yeah, it really was quite a boast. Thank, Thank you, Harry. <laughs> Thank you, Harry. Good luck with it. Thank you all for listening to this edition of Quite a Boast. Special thanks to Matt Lucas for permission to use the Peanuts music as our theme tune, and thanks to Ed Lewis for this edit. Thank you to Jake Chesson for permission to use the photo from his 1995 shoot of Jim and Bob in our various online locations for the podcast. And of course, thank you very much to Jim Moyer and Bob Mortimer, without whom this podcast, well, it just wouldn't exist, would it? Remember to check out Paula's Divine Comedians podcast as well, and to join the Reza Mortimer Depository of Curious Stuff Facebook group. And I think you'll agree that really was a lot of fun. Goodbye.